Hey guys, Davin Lim, Dermatologist. Time to eat some humble pie and actually explain to you what I have thought of in the past as wrong, but now have changed my mind, right? So it can be both good things and bad things. So let's kick it off. PRP, so platelet-rich plasma. Many years ago, 2015, all the way up to 2017, I used PRP for absolutely everything. Things like dark circles, eye rejuvenation, skin rejuvenation, acne scarring, etc., etc., etc. One thing I did not use it for is basically hair loss, and believe it or not, that is the indication which works best. So back then, I thought PRP was the absolute gift of what your immune system or what your platelets can deliver to improve skin conditions. I was so wrong. I'm absolutely sorry. But when, we, when I saw all these patients and, and did PRP, did I see an improvement that is out of, I guess, out of proportion compared to using the primary treatment? For example, laser versus laser versus PRP. What I saw was that PRP could give you a very modest improvement in healing up times, but the clinical results, I could not see a difference. And that includes everything from rejuvenation to acne scarring. So guys, I was wrong about PRP and I do apologize. So then my second thing is on microneedling. So I was arrogant enough, like basically seven, eight years ago, to use a derma roller, um, started rolling and I chucked it in the bin and I go, well, you know, that's so outdated. I'm wrong with that because microneedling is still useful. In fact, I still use it on a daily basis. Maybe not the actual roller itself or, or skin pen, but I use it manually. In other words, pick a needle and I actually needle, for example, to break acne scarring on the forehead. So microneedling, I think, is a very useful procedure. You can do it at home, and once again, I've been wrong about this, I said don't do it at home. You can do it at home only if you're very careful with the needle depth. So stick to something between 0.2 to 0.25. You don't need to go deep to get the good results from microneedling. Guys, sorry about misinformation many years ago. Number three, eye creams, and once again, I was wrong. At that stage, I say eye creams are basically dilutions of uh, creams that you normally use on your face. So something like retinol or ascorbic acid. And basically, because your eye area is super sensitive, what companies do is to dilute that. So there is some truth in it, but I thought all eye creams were the same. But I'm wrong, because now we know that there are different types of ingredients specific to the eye area, which you can benefit from. For example, caffeine. Caffeine can help constrict blood vessels and decrease the amount of erythema or redness, which is part and parcel of some causes of dark circles. So caffeine. The other thing is vitamin K. So vitamin K is often added with the actual um, eye creams, and that can also modulate blood flow. Two other ingredients, argan or argan oil, that can help in some cases because it is a gentle antioxidant. So you don't usually find argan oil as a standalone on uh, face creams, but it can be added to eye creams. And the biggest, absolutely biggest ingredient, which I forgot to mention many years ago, and embarrassingly so, is boron. So boron basically reflects light. So if you have dark circles, right? So this is how I tell you guys, if you've got a black car door and you get a ding, what happens? It absorbs light. You can see it a lot better compared to a white car door with a ding. So what has this got to do with things? If you've got dark circles, it absorbs light. If you've got dark circles, but having something to reflect light, basically you don't take it up and the appearance of dark circles is less. So boron is super, super handy for an eye cream. Guys, so transamic acid. I've been known on social media as well as YouTube to say that possibly transamic acid cream can actually help reduce pigmentation. So I ran with this for many years. Uh, in fact, we even use creams and injectables and compared that to using tea acid tablets for pigmentation. So in the context of eye creams, in the context of creams, tea acid itself to help decrease pigment, if it's used in a topical formulation, just does not work. So guys, I stand corrected and say, sorry, oral preparations are so much better 
and more predictable. Sunscreens, years ago, in fact, I was guilty of doing this even longer. Two decades ago, I wrote a paper on the use of sunscreens. And in that paper, I basically said, aerosol sunscreens were rubbish. Because at that stage, research has shown that when you use sunscreens, it should be, then it should be between five mils to six mils application to get you to an SPF of that number. That's for your face, right? So at that stage, aerosols were not getting anywhere near that. However, recent papers have shown that aerosol sunscreens can actually have a very high factor of SPF. So SPF is a measure of your sun protection, which is also translated to the amount that you use. So if you use the correct amount, you'll get that SPF. If you use half that amount as recommended, you get half the SPF. So guys, I'm very, very wrong. I think that sunscreens now with your formulations and your spray formulations, they probably give you better, if not equal SPF compared to a lotion. And that's been shown in multiple studies. Guys, the last one is Pico lasers. So I think it was last year or a year before, I said, look, you know, the Pico Sure is a generation one laser. Well, we look at generation two lasers such as Pico Away. At that stage, I thought that second or third generation lasers were much better compared to your first generation. I'm wrong, but only in this context. So Pico Sure, I th still think is the best laser for treating Asian skin types, ethnic skin types together with pigment. So initially, when I looked at the data between um, Pico Sure and Pico Way, when I looked at different wavelengths and looked at the different hand pieces, it's a standout that Pico Way should get you a better result, but no, I was wrong. In the context of Asian skin rejuvenation, ethnic skin rejuvenation, when we're treating non melasma pigment, I firmly believe that even the older generation of Pico Sure, Pico Sure 1, is better than all the other Pico lasers there is. Now, of course, we've got the Pico Sure Pro, which has much more power. So I think it's a game changer and will probably blow all the other lasers into the water. Guys, I hope you like that. It's humble pie I'm eating. I've known to be wrong. I'm always, I wouldn't say always wrong. I'm usually right, but sometimes wrong. Guys, till the next time, please like, comment, share. See you then.